Konnichiwa, Minasan. Uh, hello, good afternoon, everyone. This is um, going to be soundtracked by the wind. It's really windy out today. Uh, we're just into spring, and um, yeah, it's cool and windy. So this is going to be a values-based video um, because I just wanted to talk about the journey to be vegan, plant-based, very vegan. Uh, you know, it's a personal choice, obviously, and it's a value-based choice. Um, I think it should be that way because the value in, in making decisions based on being open-minded, experimenting, uh, trusting, researching, ex I said experimenting, uh, I like to experiment. Um, you know, that, that all builds your values, your character, and, uh, and it impacts the relationship you have on everything around you, from the environment to uh, the other people in your life. The ones you love and the ones you don't love so much. Um, so, I think my journey became um, more intense uh, after I moved from New York City where I experimented a lot with being vegan and I was for long periods of time um, to living with my family in Sonoma County uh, and eating um, in an entirely vegan household eating an almost entirely vegan uh, diet and um, besides the physical health attributes um, that it helped uh, the, the things that you know came from good physical health of reducing how much fat and uh, honestly salt um, and all the other things that come with uh, you know eating animal proteins and, and whatnot there were a lot of uh, psychological benefits too um, partly developing uh, empathy for not just the people around me and why they made their decisions, but, you know, obviously for the animals that um, I chose not to eat and empathy for the ones that I had already, uh, had already been killed in my name um, for me to eat and survive. And where I am at today is that I'm very vegan. I'm dedicated to a plant-based way of life that says uh, less toxic as possible, uh, one that consumes as little plastic as possible, which is really hard in today's world. Um, but I still eat um, some meat, some seafood, some dairy, uh, and uh, eggs. I don't eat a lot, but quite honestly, when I'm doing uh, research and experimenting with different uh, takes on dishes like ramen especially is my focus right now i feel like the commercial part of me says you know it's important that whatever ramen recipes you finally settle on they have to be part of persuading somebody who has to give up like uh your classic ramen dishes and that's not easy because they are full of delicious fat and salt and other things and texture and layers and you know ramen's you know the ramen i'm talking about like great restaurant rama ramen or if you're you know great chef the ramen you make at home i'm not talking so much about the packaged stuff that uh, please read the ingredients before you buy and please be careful of what you buy um there's you know so many uh, additives and uh, especially sodium it will kill you <laughs> you know you're there's a I forget his his name but I think he's called the French guy cooks or uh, he does a whole series on his ramen addiction on YouTube uh, I'll try to find the link below and uh, besides his wildly creative experiments which I adore um, you know he openly admits you know this love hate relationship with 
packaged ramen and goes so far as to uh, create his own version, including the dry parts and the dried noodles. Um, incredibly inventive. And, uh, you know, inventive is what it takes to become more and more plant-based and eventually vegan because you're faced with limited choices. Um, you're faced with your own fears about um, cooking or maybe ridicule from others. Um, you know, I have a friend who's vegan in a family of non-vegans and that, that does not seem like a fun existence, frankly. Um, it'd be great, you know, if you have to uh, be your authentic self, which I think sheltering in place taught a lot of us uh, uh, who we are in relationship to those around us. Um, you know, if you have to band together with other vegans or other uh, LGBTQ uh, people of, you know, maybe your stripe of the rainbow, whatever it is, um, it's worth it, you know? Living in comfort or economic security, you know, those are great things that might come from living uh, at home or living with others in your family, but, um, and hopefully your family is a place where you can be your authentic self. But if you're not, um, and I have a family where I can feel, you know, very free to be myself, but I still feel the, the drive to um, find my tribe you know, which might have to do with um, any number of factors, <laughs> anything, whatever. Name your name your flavor, because it's it's an individual journey. So, as I said, it's a values-based video. Um, just because veganism is an open-ended topic, plant-basedism uh, is really, you know, indisputably. Wow, that wind is powerful. Indisputably, you know, a healthy way to approach your diet and to have less impact on the environment, um, how you uh, also execute that veganism, vegetarianism, um, move to more plant-based diet, uh, all those choices are important too. Um, I wanted to talk about the just the quick value of making that trip to the farmer's market as opposed to um, shopping in a grocery store, which I've been a produce clerk at a great, very organic, wonderful grocery store up in Sonoma County named Oliver's. I just love my crew at Oliver's. I miss them. Uh, but that work was hard. Uh, respect your produce clerks, <laughs> please. They're not just out there stacking um, avocados delicately. They're back in the, the cooler unloading you know, they're supposed to be, I think, 50 to 70 pounds or 50 pounds max, but load some ice on there and you're, uh, you're lifting, you know, that's a while ago. Um, anyway, respect your produce clerks and managers. Uh, okay, so back to local. And uh, that store uh, is a great example because Oliver's is um, based in Sonoma County and they strive to... Uh, include a very high percentage of locally grown and produced goods in their assortment and they let you know on your receipt um, how much you've spent of your total on local goods and it's it's they're clearly marked on the shelf and one of the um, one of the many good reasons for going local so to speak uh, is that the multiplier effect economically within that county is, I believe, up to 70% of that money stays in the county. It gets recycled, so to speak. And, uh, you know, that, that helps the people around you. You know, that makes your life healthier if your county is thriving, so to speak. Um, another good reason to go local is less transportation. You know, there's, uh, I think it's called Sunshine Market in, uh, Malibu County, I'm trying to think. There's a couple, Fairfax, there's a couple of locations, but they uh, put the amount of miles the produce has traveled to get to the store um, on each product they offer in the produce department, which is all organic. And uh, I, I just think that's marvelous. You should know. And, you know, Mexico, for example, for Californians, I suppose, which I am one of, uh, 
grows an enormous amount of produce that we import and um, some of it's great. Uh, the Mexican government in a good way, you know, supports their farmers and uh, has uh, helped them build more greenhouses and, you know, whatever. Um, but, you know, as far as trade protectionism goes, uh, a lot of Americans uh, see it as, um, you know, because wages tend to be lower, are lower there, you know, that it, that it uh, is anti-American to import from Mexico. But first of all, a lot of the owners um, are American of the farms down in Mexico. And secondly, who cares? Like, who cares? Honestly, it's um, hopefully uh, not traveling too far. Uh, but if it's more efficiently grown down there, the season's more natural, or they're better at growing certain things, then, uh, you know, go for it. However, if you can be as local as possible, including growing what you can at home, if you have the space and the light and the, the resources, if you want to, you know, do some indoor uh, growing in, in water solutions and whatnot with uh, artificial lights, that, you know, that's even more local. However, supporting your farmer at the farmer's market um, and just going to the farmer's market is such a joy. There's so many things to discover. I'm lucky I live near Torrance, um, which uh, has a lot of Asian influence and it's, uh, it's a great farmer's market on Tuesdays and Saturdays. Today's Tuesday. Um, but it, you know, it's just a place of discovery, a place of knowledge where, um, you know, the mushroom grower can tell you how to, you know, properly brew uh, a reishi tea. Uh, you know, it's, it's just, um, it's a joy. And you're bringing much better nutrition and safer food to your table when you do that. Uh, and it's, it can be cost effective. It can be very expensive too, depending how you shop. But it's, um, it's uh, something a savvy shopper can certainly navigate around in terms of getting, you know, getting what you need and not spending so much more than you might at the uh, grocery store. And, you know, the definition of organic even is a little bit, um, what's the word, uh, looser, you know, at a farmer's market. It might not be 100% certified organic, but you can... Um, generally count on things being no man it's windy no or low spray um, and most importantly it's it's fresher you know it's often been picked within the day or the day before um, and being brought to you in its prime presented for market I'm gonna have to adjust my camera let's see here I'm trying to do this without cuts, honestly, because I'm a sucky editor, just beyond me. Technology is quite a challenge for me, so, but I consider it a brain game at this point. Okay, balance. Um, so, again, the journey can be a fun one. I mean, you don't have to uh, go 100% vegan immediately. You probably already know some of the the foibles you have in the meat world that, that maybe you could cross off your list and you probably have things that are less negotiable like cheese or eggs. You know, for me, I, uh, I have tried many vegan nut cheeses, oat cheeses, cheeses with algae, and it is really hard to replicate um, the process, you know, the biological process of um, a cow grazing on a Swiss hillside in Appenzeller to create alpine cheese. I mean, the flavors are incredible. So I live for the day when we get there. And there's, you know, other things being developed um, along the lines of mushroom leather. If you've just read about uh, Hermes uh, committing to, to that, which uh, restores some of my faith in the fashion business that I left. Um, as I said, if you're, um, making the move to go more plant-based, uh, don't do it all at once if you don't want to. I mean, some people are great at cold tofurkey, but, uh, some people like to do things gradually and you can definitely eliminate things that are less healthy and replace them 
with things that are deeply satisfying. And the, the wonderful thing is you can uh, feel your palate evolve. You can uh, realize that with less sugar and less salt and um, less uh, animal fats, uh, the nuances of the different plants, and I'm including mushrooms and seaweed uh, under that uh, rubric, uh, the flavors start to open up and you start to get pickier about um, where your herbs come from and what your lettuce tastes like. Uh, you know, there's only so many commercial meats in the world, but there are so many more amazing plants from different cultures and places and soils, you know, uh, learn a little bit about soil in this journey and how important it is to us and how, um, you know, sequestering carbon instead of creating more carbon is uh, a vital part of preserving our planet for the next generations. You know, it's, uh, there's definitely some altruism in being vegan um, as well, you know, do it for your own health, but do it because it's your responsibility to the next uh, occupants of this planet um, and universe for that matter, as we go to Mars. Anyway, I, um, I've eaten a lot of different things in my life. I've been lucky to travel to a lot of different cultures. Um, I love the taste of certain um, uh, meats and things. You know, I don't, I don't uh, criticize anybody that, uh, you know, still uh, consumes that way because you're doing the best with what you have. Um, but now what you have, if you're actually watching this and hopefully doing some other kinds of research, is um, an open mind, you know, to finding a gentle path maybe, if that's what it takes, to reducing your waste, your consumption, your impact, your... Honestly, for me, it's psychic karma as well, you know? It is not kind, you know, what they do to to animals to um, produce our food. Um, and uh, sometimes I justify seafood, uh, especially down to the bivalve level, that, uh, you know, clams and mussels uh, don't have feelings. They don't seem to have a central nervous response to, to, to pain or whatnot. I don't know if that's a justification or not, but um, that, that keeps me from eating a lot of other things. Um, you know, pork is, is central to ramen cuisine, but, uh, it is, it's pretty cruel what, um, you know, what a pig feels, honestly. You can, you can just get to know a pig and it is really hard, uh, you know, to imagine, you know, uh, consuming, um, but again, and I vacillate here because I know that that flavor profile, as delicious and complex as it is, I know that's what, like, my nonkatsu, which is the tonkatsu, the vegan version, you know, I'll never get there exactly um, until they start maybe growing ethical meat, pork meat, in a, in a lab and then in a factory that's not... Uh, farm factory um, but you know I'm gonna keep on innovating or evolving my ramen till it's you know delicious enough that any uh, tonkatsu eater will be pleased to, to eat that as well or instead okay so thanks for uh, the long listen uh, you know I have a lot to say on this topic uh, along the way um, I also will share a little bit more about me, you know, more my, my journey and who I am. Um, I go by a pseudonym that's derived from my Japanese heritage, uh, Kitagawa, um, and then a first name that I just find fanciful, which is Drake. Um, but my real name is Dave, 
<laughs> Dave, David. I grew up as David. Now I feel more like a Dave. Um, so that's why I am under the uh, the layers of um, representation required <laughs> in this business. Um, I think I'm just gonna say this almost feels like um, a redemption video. You know, it's up to this point, which is about a year into COVID, um, that I've gotten to this, uh, you know, realization of the richness of the opportunity of the tragedy of the pandemic. It's um, it's changed so many things about my life, um, and the 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 like the sadness and pain of the, the loss of so many people and the struggle of so many people is it's it's horrific um and for me it's it's been um a boon to my creativity and my independence and my introspection and my values and you know it's given me so much time to think try experiment um like myself again you know a lot of things and uh i know it's um getting a little better knock on wood um i just urge you to use the if you have extra time or even fewer resources use it as an opportunity to grow in a positive direction and if you decide to invest the time in um, trying vegan and plant-based dishes um, you know i want to start with ramen because it's fun uh, hopefully the whole family can be into it if you uh, feed somebody other than yourself um, you know it's it's a it's a creative food field it's a fun food field there's incredible youtubers and chefs professionals ramen chefs i mean it's just such a rich uh rich world and so interesting um but use this opportunity and uh take this journey with me if you want um there's so many things you need to do on uh, these youtube videos but i think you you know by now like liking and subscribing and talking it up and you know that's that's where a channel becomes viable and in, can increase its sphere of influence so if you uh want to be influenced in this way if you want this dialogue uh you know anything you can do to um, help the channel grow you know unfortunately that's the the business side of this creativity uh, which you know i'm up for the challenge but i mostly want to focus on producing uh tasty innovative innovative superfood oriented uh delicious satisfying um ramen soba other japanese dishes via the toppings you know the whole world of i'm half japanese my mom was born in hawaii so i'm third generation and i've been to japan a couple times studied a little bit of japanese but, you know, I love learning more and more about myself by learning about my Japanese culture. Uh, it's obviously a rich culture in terms of art, literature, food. Uh, modern culture is, you know, awash with incredible designers, clothing designers, furniture designers. Uh, in industry, in terms of... Um, automobiles and and much more much more manufacturing you know the japanese have contributed uh, an enormous amount to the world and uh, i don't know any japanese relatives uh, i don't know any of my relatives in japan yet i don't know if i can even find them or track them down but uh, i hope you know somewhere along this journey via hawaii so i can check in on my relatives there um i'll i'll get to japan I'm doing the reverse ramen course, I'm trying to be self-taught uh, before I make it to Japan and maybe even meet uh, a real ramen chef. Wouldn't that be cool? Um, luckily, though, I live in L.A., which is right now. I'm uh, actually watching a friend's house uh, while she's away, uh, my best friend from college. 
and I'm so grateful for the the beautiful um, home and especially the really cool kitchen I'm working out of um, for that. Um, LA has uh, is a is multicultural in the best way possible, and I live close to uh, uh, San Pedro and Torrance, Long Beach. I mean, this area, um, because of some of the things that happened after World War II, during World War II, the internments, um, there's a lot of uh, uh, generational Japanese here. And uh, therefore, there's a lot of great stores and different restaurants, which are just starting to reopen. A lot of them were open for, uh, you know, takeout and whatnot. But I look forward to hopefully getting to some actual ramen restaurants and sitting down, getting that hot bowl served to me. But meanwhile, the combination of um, places like Hitachia, which is uh, HitachiaUSA.com, if you want to uh, shop for um, Japanese kitchenware. Um, and then Nijia Markets, uh, there's a, uh, it's uh, pronounced it wrong, Mitsua, um, God, Segua, I don't know, I just shop. <laughs> uh, but the, the, you know, mainstays are honestly uh, Nijia and there's several locations. And um, I'm learning, you know, piece by piece, some of the things that uh, assist in producing Japanese cuisine from the Hitachiya store. So I'm grateful to, to them very much. Uh, they don't even know me. I'm just, I'm just grateful I get to shop there. Uh, I call it my new shopping crutch. Crutch and crush. Crush, but also uh, in a good way, a crutch. So I think I'm going to halt it there and uh, I'm gonna get back into that kitchen loosen up, get back into that kitchen and work on some stock and noodles. I went to the numero uno and got some um, blue corn flour because I'm still trying to make a gluten-free soba noodle. Uh, all buckwheat flour is for the soba masters. I'm, I'm gonna have to mix it with something for me to make noodles because I'm not, not at all there yet. So. I don't know. I've, I've failed in many combinations with buckwheat flour so far, and uh, I'm just gonna try a new one, which is gonna be uh, probably 50-50 or 75-25 um, blue corn, and gosh knows what that's gonna taste like, but I can always um, adjust the broth and the toppings, maybe to reflect the if the corn feel comes through. I think it'd be fun. I love Mexican cuisine. What's not to love? Uh, it'd be fun to make um, a, a dish, uh, you know, based on that, that rich cuisine. Um, and maybe it starts with a bluish corn uh, soba noodle. Soba slash trying to be a ramen noodle. So, okay, uh, Ramen Heads, great movie. Um, I'm going to uh, sign off and get in the kitchen. And... Uh, I don't know if you heard any of this because that wind is so strong, but I sure feel better talking about all that. Okay, bye, ciao for now.